What's up guys? CT Grommer. We're going to do a little bit different of a video today. We're going to be doing a mod video today. I'm assuming that you guys have just picked up your first Grom and it's it can be super overwhelming to look at everything and do all the research. I want to consolidate that and uh, have a comprehensive look at all the mods today. I'm going to break them into four categories. We're going to do power and performance. We're going to do aesthetic. We're going to do stunts. So let's get right to it. So in the first category, power and performance mods, we're going to go straight into the most common one that people are probably going to do right when they get the bike is exhaust. The stock exhaust is terrible, it's heavy, it's quiet as hell, and frankly to me, it's, it's unsafe. People can't hear you. I think people need to hear you. The bike's already small. As far as recommendations go, the most common and the most thought of when you think of high-end exhaust for the Grom is the Yoshi. The problem is you're going to be spending between $450 and $500 on a Yoshimura system like this. So my other recommendation for something like this would be the Zoom exhaust or the AR exhaust, both of which you can pick up on Amazon or on Facebook for more like $120, $150. The Zoom exhaust comes with and without the loop, which brings me to my next point. A lot of people say that the loop adds the proper back pressure to get a little bit more horsepower. but Let's be real. I mean, we're talking about maybe a quarter of more horsepower when you're talking about an eight horsepower total bike. So really, it's just about making the bike sound better. So I'd go with the Yoshi or the Zoom. One more thing about exhaust. If exhaust is all you're going to do, you probably don't need to do any programming or electronic jetting. But just to get this out of the way right now, you have to remember how these bikes come. Now these bikes come from the manufacturer complying with emissions and all sorts of other things that make the bike run lean. So they can put out way less exhaust and we don't want to hurt the environment. So they, they have these things running super lean, which is not good for performance. So if you already have a lean condition and you free up the exhaust and you put in more, more free flow, it's going to run even leaner. Now the ECU will adjust a little bit for that. If you're going to add an air intake, you really should think about um, some sort of air fuel management and we'll get to that next. So after exhaust, I was kind of segueing into intake. Again, I was saying on exhaust, if you're just going to do the exhaust, probably don't need to worry about your air fuel ratio. If you start messing with intake, you do. Now, a lot of people with performance, it ends at exhaust, but for the people that want a little bit more horsepower, the next thing you can do is remove the air box. You can remove the air box and either get just a cheap you can find them anywhere. Just a cheap foam air filter. You can stick it directly to the ECU. That's one thing you can do. Or you can buy a system that a lot of these guys make. There's a thing called a Chimera air intake and they're expensive, but they're, I, I think they add a lot. And if you want to actually get in and see if you can get a look at this, probably should have pulled my, uh, my plastics off the side. But anyway, it comes with a aluminum tube and an actual K&N cotton gauze air filter instead of the foam pod. But uh, what a lot of guys do is they'll just modify the air box too. It's whatever you want to do. But if you do this, again, I got to emphasize this. If you're going to mess with the air and try to, try to get the air box and the air intake free flowing a little bit more, it segues into my next thing, which is air fuel ratio uh, management, like a Power Commander 5. You really, really should do that, guys. You're going to have a super lean condition if you don't. If you're running an air intake and an exhaust, you're super lean. That leads me into my third thing. And so my third thing is air fuel management. I'm going to recommend a Power Commander 5. So over here, you've got the Dynajet Power Commander 5. Now these things are pretty much plug and play. They fix your air fuel, they richen it up. The way it works is it plugs in kind of between your ECU and your little box that controls the ECU. And it'll add horsepower too. It comes with software for your laptop, pre-programmed for if you're running an air intake and what pipe you're running. For instance, it has programming for a Chimera air intake and a Yoshimura exhaust. I download that map and I flash it onto the uh, Dynajet. I plug it in. The bike runs way better. In fact, I think one day I'll do a video with stock ECU and then the Dynajet We'll do a speed run, and I'm telling you, it's a significant difference. So exhaust intake and air fuel management software is, I mean, that, that's, that's gonna be 80% of people, that's enough. But for the next, uh, for the people that really wanna spend some money on their Groms and really get trick, 
there's a couple more things you can do for power and performance. One of them is going to be the uh, Kitako clutch cover. The stock engine has what's called an oil spinner. It uses centrifugal spinning, rotating mass to spin the oil uh, free of contaminants. It's a pain to clean. There's also an oil screen down in here. This removes all of that and gives you an actual cartridge filter, like a dirt bike and like a real bike. So a lot safer for the Grom and it removes the oil spinner. And when you remove the oil spinner, you're freeing up rotating mass and the engine can rev a lot quicker. Is there a felt difference when I'm, when I'm going fast? Not really, but it's, it's pretty cool to have a cartridge. And then you can step it up even more. There's an expansion kit where you can actually add an external oil cooler. This is kind of a five row. This is way overkill for this bike. For someone that's going to Gromfathers and getting a big bore kit and getting a four valve head, yeah, probably necessary to cool the oil. Guys, I'm just telling you all the cool performance and power mods you can do. So this is way down on the list and uh, it definitely made the list because you definitely get cool points when you roll up and you got the Kitako clutch cover and the oil cooler on the bike. One last thing about the Kitako while I'm thinking about it, they're pretty expensive. So again, 80% of you, just do the first two or three things. The last thing I wanna talk about for power and performance, I wanna talk about the tires that come on these things. And the more videos you're gonna watch on the Groms, they're gonna talk about the V-rubber tires. These things are like dinosaur hard. I swear they'll probably go like 20,000 miles. In the winter and in any sort of wet condition, they're borderline dangerous. They just, they don't hold. In the summers here in Central California, where it's really hot, they do okay because they finally, after like an hour of riding on pavement that's like 140 degrees, they finally soften enough to grip a little bit. So that works, but in any other condition, they're not very good. They're actually good for two things. They're good for um, holding up under burnouts, like one minute long burnouts, and um, squeaking the tire when you're coming up to a light really fast to scare the cars around you. It, it, they do squeak really, really loud. They're good for those two things. Other than that, I would replace these pretty quick, especially if you're in wetter conditions. My personal preference would be Michelin Power Pures. Look them up. They're like $50, $55 a tire. They're worth every penny. All right, guys, um, after performance, we're going to talk stunts and Lucky that we have uh, Christian here. You've seen him in my videos doing uh, stand-ups, doing sit-downs and everything in between. He's definitely the stunter of the group, or one of them anyway. Um, moving right into it, the first stunt mod, the most common stunt mod that you're going to see guys do on these Groms is a 12 bar or a wheelie bar. And uh, the purpose of this is to keep you from damaging the bike if you drop it. If you get too far back, you can scrape, and then it gives you a place to put your feet, too, when you're doing your stand-ups and things like that. This is an SMF. I don't even know what that stands for, though. Christian's actually behind the camera. Christian, what does SMF stand for? Self-made fabrication. This is a really good budget-friendly piece of hardware here. Christian, about how much do you think this costs? About 150 bucks. So you can get one of these. If you want to go higher end, you could go get bent. I guess those are pretty nice. 402 Innovations makes some nice stuff, but anyway, Google them and see if you <laughs> want to buy this stuff. Okay, so guys, the next thing after the 12 bar, the next common thing that guys are going to want to do is uh, sprockets. Can't see them. You got your front sprocket, your rear sprocket. The most common way that people will do this, the best bang for your buck, is just to go down a tooth in the front and that'll give you a lot more low end. It'll allow you to pop the clutch and get the bike up a little bit more, especially second gear with these stock. It's pretty hard to get a wheelie, even if you're popping the clutch. It, people do it, obviously, but, but when you're learning them, you need every advantage. And I would say dropping a tooth in the front is gonna give you that extra low end to help get the bike up. Um, guys will do stuff to the rear as well. Going down one in the front is like adding two sprockets to the rear. Is that right, Christian? Yep, okay. or three. Uh, adds three, okay. So, but if you start screwing around with the rear, a lot of times you'll have to get a new chain as well and definitely have to adjust the chain. Did you just go down by one on your on I'm your down setup? one and up three in the back. So, so plus six in total. So he's got a lot of low end on this and I've seen him and you've seen him in my videos if you watch any of them. He's always on one tire. Christian is running JT sprockets. You can pick them up on Amazon, check those out. But I would definitely do that if you're going to start stunting. 12 bar sprockets definitely. Um, the next thing that we're going to get into is a handbrake setup. If you're going to start doing a lot of stuff where you're not sitting down where you can keep your right foot over the rear brake, you're going to need to get yourself a handbrake setup. A lot of guys do this. 
This is where it gets a little bit more pricey though. There's about a million options for these. You can go the Brembo route, which is super nice. And then you've got just a simple junction valve from 402 Innovation. Do not get that. Here's your stock brake. He's got steel, steel braided brake lines too. Again, I don't know much about this, Christian. Can you tell me a little bit about this rear brake setup? Yeah, it's just a brake caliper from an 03 or 04 Kawasaki 636. Ah, okay. Just a custom bracket over the stock rotor, and that's pretty much it. So if the kids want to get into something like this overall for a whole handbrake setup at about this grade, what are they looking at price? Roughly 300 300 bucks. Tops. Okay. 300 tops. Okay. Yeah, if for a, wanted, for a budget friendly setup like this is. If they wanted to get into a whole Brembo setup, what are we looking at? You're looking at 250 for the master, about another 200 250 for the caliper and bracket and then the line, another 50 to 80 bucks. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so you're 6 700 bucks. Yeah. yeah. The next thing is uh, clutch. And now this is another thing that I don't know a lot about, but I know guys will go stiffer clutch springs. Whenever you're trying to get that bike up, you really want bite. We don't have a lot of horsepower, so we need to maximize the horsepower getting to the rear wheel to get you up. And if you get some stiffer clutch springs, which a lot of guys do, they've got 30% stiffer, they've got 60% stiffer. Can you tell us a little bit about your clutch setup on this one, Christian? Yeah, I just have a, another budget build kind of thing. It's just a eBay shorty clutch lever, oh, yeah. similar to the... RSC or Impact Tech or any hundred dollar plus clutches, but and then for springs, what are you running? I have three, three out of the six springs are thirty percenters. Thirty percent stiffer. Yeah, and then a billet clutch plate as well. Perfect. And then you can so he's got like the strongest finger ever, but this is significantly harder to pull than say mine on the stock here, which is like nothing. We're getting kind of down the list, so less and less common. A lot of guys that are stunning quite a bit, like Christian, the next thing that they'll do is uh, stiffer springs in the front. How much stiffer are your uh, are your forks? They're the 0.65 kilograms, so it's set up for like, I think a 200 pound rider or something. 200 pound rider, like well that. that makes sense because if I try to compress these, I mean, they go in a little bit, they go down to about half, but I'm almost certain that when I compress mine, these things will almost bottom out. Oh, <laughs> Can yeah. Can you see the difference? Yeah, that's huge. That's crazy. So, I and every time I ride Christian's bike, I'm instantly envious. So, if you're slamming down a lot and you're coming off of wheelies a lot and you just want your bike to ride a little bit better and you're not like a 130 pound Thailand dude, get the stiffer springs. That'd be a good idea. What are we looking at for stiffer springs? The kit itself is about a hundred bucks. hundred bucks Inst plus installation. Yeah, you can do it yourself or take it somewhere. Pay about a hundred, 150 bucks for install. Oh, 300 bucks. Your call guys, but yep. I would do it. The next thing that people will do is probably rear sets. Now, when you come over here and you want to take a quick gander at the stock rear sets, these are cast aluminum, they're light. They look good enough. I like the way they look. But the problem is you go down with these, you're gonna shear the foot peg clean off and they just, they break. They break really, really easily and they're kind of expensive to, uh, to replace. So instead of replacing them with the same thing, a lot of guys will just go ahead and get something that's got a little bit more strength and get some of these really nice aftermarket steel um, rear sets. These have got the passenger peg. This one's been sheared off, I think. Yeah. But it's on the other side. But then you've got, and you can see he's put these to good use a couple of times, actually. But this has definitely saved you some money, huh? Going down and having these. Right? Oh, yeah. And that, that's what it's all about, guys. You go down, you got your nice rear sets. They're going to protect the bike, and they're going to hold up. They'll take, they'll take a couple lickings and keep on ticking. That's right. But rear sets, definitely a good investment. A nice set of uh, rear sets like this, what are we looking at, Christian? The passenger ones are a little bit more, but you can get them for like 150 for the solo pigs. Okay, 150 for the set? For the set, yeah. Okay. All right, guys, we've been through performance. We've been through stunt parts. The next thing I want to cover is aesthetics, aesthetic mods. The first and probably by far the most common aesthetic mod is going to be the rear fender elimination. As you can see, neither of these bikes have a rear fender. You can do something super simple, like uh, kind of a DIY, like Christian did here. As you can see, guys, 
He's just got two zip ties on each side. It hangs down perfectly. This is about as low budget as you can get. If you want to get exotic, you can come over to uh, mine here. This is the Yoshimura Fender Eliminator Kit. Now this thing is super by the book, guys. This thing lets you set up your stock blinkers and it gives you a, uh, it gives you a plate light, integrates with your existing um, brake light, and it just ties into your subframe underneath here. I'd caution you guys on doing something like this because it costs like a hundred bucks for the, uh, for the OG Grom. And that's super expensive. Vegabond makes one too, and that one's like 69 bucks. I might look at a Vegabond, my first Grom, my red Grom, that was the first thing I did is I got a Vegabond um, Fender Eliminator kit. So the next most common aesthetic mod by far and away, and this is probably the deepest rabbit hole that we're going to go down today, is handlebars. Handlebars and grips. Um, the Pro Tapers are probably going to be the best. People really, really like the Pro Tapers. These are the Pro Taper KLX uh, 110s or DRZ 110s. These are pretty close to the stock bars, guys. In fact, I've got I've got the stock bars right here. So if we put them side by side, it's very interesting to see that they're they're pretty close. In fact, they're very close. The stock bars a little bit more narrow, a little bit more swept back. I like the stock bars okay. The, more than anything, I didn't like the way they looked. And I gotta say, now that I'm riding with these, and you get a much wider feel and a much straighter feel, I've really come to like the way that these bars feel. And then I've matched them up with just some Pro Taper pillow top grips. What kind of grips are these, Christian? I'm not too sure. I know they're <laughs> okay. real cushiony ones. Tell us a little bit about your bars. I love these bars. I'm super envious of his bars. What kind of bars are these? The, rather than just the 7 8 bars for the small ones, these are the 1 and 1 8th. So, ah, the so fatty you had bars. To that brings us to, I'm glad you brought that up, that brings us into um, risers and different, uh, getting into a different setup to get the bars in. Because 7 8 guys, is the stock size. You can use the, uh, the stock bar clamps um, with the 7 8 but if you go to a fat bar like this, which looks way better, what are, what are, the, what are we getting into here? So for the, if you want just a pro taper mount for the big bars, it's about, I think 30 or 40 bucks. Okay. If you want to spice it up and get a Perfect Strangers uh, Designs Ooh, one, then yeah. you're looking at a, a hundred bucks for that bad boy. hundred bucks for just the, uh, just the bar. Just the bar and it's a riser as well. It's a one inch rise. So these are beautiful bars. You could do something like this. So on the high end, you could get some really nice bars like that and get the really nice bar clamp like he's got, or you can save yourself the money get you just some 7 8 bars like this with some cheap grips take advantage of your uh, of your stock bar clamps yeah but guys go on amazon go around look at some other reviews there are about a million different styles of grips and yeah. more importantly of handlebars do yeah. your research find out what's good for you a lot of guys like to go with the honda minis i don't like them it kind of bends you over a little bit too more if you're over 5 6 you do yourself a favor and get you the uh, KLX 110s or get you something like this. And what were these yeah. again? These are the Raptors. These are the Raptors. Yeah. So get yourself something like that. That would be my advice. If you want something pretty close to the stock height, KLX 110 or the Raptors. A lot of guys will go out and they'll change their blinkers because let's be real, I'm kind of a stickler on this. I like having blinkers. I like to keep the police not looking at me. So I keep the stock blinkers on there. I may change them out because the amber is really starting to get obnoxious for me with the red and the black. But let's be real, they're very ugly. They're humongous and they're kind of an eyesore. So the next thing people do is blinkers. One of the most common things that guys will do, if we take a look at Christian's bike, you got these beautiful integrated and smoked blinkers. Let's see if we can turn them on real quick, huh? So check it out. You got the smoked look, but the blinker is still subtle. It still comes through. Um, you can decide whether or not you want to do something like that. A lot of times stunters will come over here and they'll take the blinkers off the back because, I mean, there's no way if you're if you're ever trying to hop up on the bike like this, you're going to hit the rear blinkers. So people just take them off. So the way that you can comply still is to have an integrated brake light like this. These are super nice. I love these. So there's, there's what your blinker looks like. Let's hit the brake real quick so you can have a quick look-see. Pretty bright? Yeah, bright enough. 
Christian, where can you pick up this integrated uh, tail light? Amazon for the win. What are we looking at on price? We're looking at about 13 bucks. Why haven't I done that yet? What about the blinkers? Looking at about 13 bucks. Oh, <laughs> why, why, why haven't I done that yet? <laughs> Okay, so the next thing that guys will do, like um, like it's just some big surprise. What's it, what's he gonna talk about right now? The next thing guys are gonna do on these bikes for aesthetic mods is do something about this seat. This is actually my new favorite mod. I'm searching for something. I already have an aftermarket seat, but the bottom line is guys, you gotta change this out. This seat, you know, it's sticky enough and it seems like it'll hold up to sun and the elements and everything good enough, but it is so uncomfortable on a ride and from a stunt standpoint and from just a, a look standpoint, it's just, you know, everybody's about customizing the aesthetic of their Grom. This is one of the easiest ways to do it and this will get you the compliments too. So over here, going to mine first, um, I actually don't know who makes this. It says M MWD, but I actually don't remember who makes this, but I know this seat can be purchased on Amazon for like 100, 150 bucks. This seat is super comfy. If you put them side by side, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This thing's dull. It's not fun. This thing's got a super sick leather pattern. Then it's got the carbon fiber look on the sides. And again, this seat is like three times more comfy than this one. But going over to my personal favorite over here at Christian's Grown, believe it or not, this is a stock seat that's been reupholstered by a guy that he just found on Instagram, right? Yep, Shane McDowell. Shane, Shane McDowell. I'll have to drop his Instagram in the video so you guys can look it up. He does all kinds of stitching. This is actually pretty close to the stock look. It's a little bit different. It's darker. It's way more grippy. This thing, like, this is, you cannot even move your finger across it. I love the purple stitching that he did here. And like the 3D look here. You got multiple layers on the top. And then you got a spot right here on the back that'll hook your butt in when you're doing willies and when you're trying to do seat standers. You got a little platform for your toes. Oh, silver carbon fiber. Silver carbon fiber on the sides. That's what I missed. I freaking love the look of this seat, man. I'm jealous. So I'm gonna have Shane make me a seat too, because I seriously think they're awesome. So if you so what's the deal, Christian? You send him your stock seat, right? Via mail. Right. And then he reupholsters it. Yeah, I give him a couple weeks and he pulls the top off or reupholsters it to any color or totally customized. Totally custom. Any color, any color stitching, different strap, different adding on the end to for the bump. What are we looking at? 100, 150 bucks? Yeah, 150 this... to 180, depending on what you want with it. Dude, that's a done mod. All you kids watching, do the seat, you're gonna get compliments. All right, so getting down the list, one of the best ways, I would say, besides the seat, to customize the Grom, vinyl wrapping. So Christian chose to do kind of a digital gray camo, which I think the look is awesome. And there's about a million just different types of vinyl wrap, right, Christian? Oh, tons. Options are endless. It, absolutely endless. And so you'll see a lot of guys do this. And the other thing is you can get into, if you've got the patience and you've got some time, you guys, you can get into this for just the cost of the vinyl wrap. What do you say the learning curve on learning how to do this is? How long um, did it take you? Because I know, you, Christian, you did do this yourself, right? Correct. Okay. There's a couple trial and error okay. times to it. How many hours? Yeah. Once, once you got it figured out, how many hours did it take you to do all the paneling you got? And why, and why don't we walk around and look, because it's, I mean, it's beautiful. How long did it take you to do the paneling? It took me two days, roughly, two days. a weekend, one day each side. And you had to take the decals off, right? Right, you take everything off. And... So, for instance, there's a couple decals on the stock ground, so you had to pull this off, you had to pull this off, you had to pull this off, yeah. right? And you can always leave it, it just adds a little... Texture. Exactly. And then another thing that you really should do, especially if you're trying to make it pop, all the Groms have gold forks. And if we have a look at mine, you know, that I don't know, they're kind of an eyesore. I'm eventually going to do what Christian did. He went ahead and wrapped the forks too. And I think it gives you a super custom look, and I think it just makes everything pop that much better. And yeah. it just brings this whole design in. And lastly, guys, after vinyl wrap, a lot of guys will do what you're seeing here, all this beautiful purple. This is powder coating, right? Yep. So you can find any local powder coater. If you've got a town of over 5,000 people, I promise you somebody is a powder coater. So you just pulled your tires off your rims and took all the bare metal stuff that you wanted powder coated. You just yep. took it to them, right? Exactly. Okay. And again, like vinyl wrap, I'm sure the color options are endless. Pretty much. 
and it's better than rattle canning. The, I mean, you, I'm not going to go into the, the benefits to powder coating, but it's definitely the best way to do motorcycle and automotive metal that's going to be in the sun and exposed to the elements. You have to powder coat. It's just the best way to do it. And I know you said cost varies quite a bit, but do you remember approximately what it cost you to do all the powder coating that you did, inclusive of the rims and everything? For a normal price for something like this would be 300 bucks for everything. Okay. Roughly for wheels, rear sets, 12 bar, levers, and a couple other little things here and there. All right, guys, hopefully you learned something. I'm going to drop all of the stuff that we recommend and the things that we talk about for upgraded parts. I'm going to drop all of that in the description below the video, so check that out. Guys, I'm going to start doing a little bit more of these. I'm going to try to do less vlogs and more reviews and more informative type Grom videos uh, with the help of Christian and some of the other Grom squad to uh, show their Groms as an example. But anyway, if you like what you saw today, smack the like button and uh, subscribe. If not, just come by and see what we're doing here once in a while, all right? Catch you later.